Anthropic just announced a major release, Claude 4, featuring two new flagship models, Sonnet 4 and Opus 4. They also released major updates to their agentic coding tool, Claude Code, all which are live now and available to everyone. There's a lot to unpack here, and it's going to take a few days to really dive in and understand everything. So for this video, I'll just highlight some of the most exciting features that stood out to me in their announcement and release notes. Let's get right into it. First, let's go over everything Anthropic announced. We now have two new models, Claude Opus 4 and Claude Sonnet 4. Claude Opus 4 is their most advanced model yet. I'm happily surprised by this new Opus model since they haven't had a new Opus model in over a year since early 2024. Opus 4 is specifically designed for agentic workflows and advanced coding tasks. Anthropic states that customers who previewed it were able to use Opus 4 to run multi-hour long tasks without any intervention. Claude Sonnet 4 is their new successor to Sonnet 3.7. It's now optimized for long-form reasoning, meaning it can work on a single request for hours with consistent accuracy and less hand-holding. And to no one's surprise, it excels at coding. And in my opinion, one of the biggest improvements is that it now fixed some of the major issues that 3.7 had, such as over-eagerness and reward hacking issues. In addition to the models, they also announced both models now support extended tool use, which means they can switch between reasoning and using tools like web search. So this will allow them to validate their own outputs as they work. Both models now have improved memory capabilities and can now save and access that memory across chats. And now for my favorite part of the announcement, Claude Code just got a massive upgrade. These aren't small updates. We're talking real, meaningful, new features. And I'll do a deep dive into all these Claude Code features in another video. So for now, here's a quick overview of what's new. First off, Claude Code is now generally available, even though it's been usable in beta for a while. While. It now supports the new Claude 4 models, Opus and Sonnet. You can now also specify what models you want Claude Code to use. Before, Claude Code would choose which model to use based on your request, but now you can set a custom model yourself. You can now use Claude Code in VS Code and JetBrains. There's also a new SDK available, which means developers can now build custom tools and workflows on top of Claude Code. One example Anthropic gave was integrating Claude Code with GitHub and letting Claude Code run tasks in the background. So now you can access Claude Code in any workflow, from the terminal, to your IDEs, to your custom apps via SDKs. Before, you could only use Claude Code through the terminal. So it may have intimidated some developers, but now I think we're going to see a lot more new users to Claude Code, especially since it's also available on their Mac subscription plan. Now let's talk about the new API features. First, Claude now supports code execution in a sandbox environment. In the past, Claude could only write code, but now it can actually run your code, analyze the output, and refine its solution. So this is a huge benefit for a task that involves data visualization. Then there's the MCP connector. If you have worked with model context protocol servers before, you know it used to require a lot of boiler template code just to manage the connections. But now you just pass the server URL into your API request and Claude handles all the connections and error handling. The files API is, in my opinion, one of the most important updates. Previously, you had to upload your files every single time you started a new conversation. But now, you can upload files once and reuse them across multiple chats. This not only saves time, it also reduces token usage and makes Claude feel way more persistent and context aware. Now let's talk pricing for these models. Claude Sonnet 4 is staying at the same price as previous 3.7, no changes here. But Claude Opus 4 is significantly more expensive. It's $15 per million input tokens and $75 per million output tokens. This is even more expensive than OpenAI's O3 model. One interesting takeaway that I got from their announcement was, we will be releasing models and updates more frequently going forward. And that's a big shift. Because historically, Anthropic has been slower than OpenAI or Google when it comes to rolling out updates. I'm not sure if this is a direct response to community feedback or just pressure from the market, but either way, it's great news for users. Okay, let's look at the benchmarks now. And one thing to mention up front, while benchmarks are useful for comparison, they don't always translate directly into real-world performance. So take these numbers with a grain of salt. 
So Anthropic clearly knows that their models are heavily used for coding and software engineering, and it shows. Both Opus 4 and Sonnet 4 show a 10% increase in accuracy over Sonnet 3.7. Now, two things stood out to me. First, is that OpenAI's new Codex 1 model, which is actually based on their O3 model and powers their new Codex coding tool, is now very comparable to Sonnet 4 and significantly better than Sonnet 3.7. And since Codex was just announced a few days ago, it's going to be really interesting to see how OpenAI's Codex compares against Claw Code in real-world tasks. Second, is that in the past, a lot of people switched from Sonnet 3.7 to Google's Gemini 2.5 Pro saying it follows instructions better, handles larger context windows, and generally felt more reliable. So with the new 4.0 models that are now less eager and less jumpy, it'll be interesting to see if user sentiment shifts back. One thing I do want to point out in this chart is the phrase with parallel test time compute. This basically means Anthropic is allocating more resources, such as multiple samples and output filtering, to simulate the best possible outcome the model can produce under a ideal condition. But in real life, this kind of evaluation isn't always reflective of typical usage. So while it's cool to show what these models can do under ideal situations, take this metric with a grain of salt. Now let's break down a few key benchmarks. So if we look at graduate level reasoning, which measures performance on tough science questions on physics, chemistry, and biology, we see Sonnet 4 actually perform worse than Sonnet 3.7, and Opus 4 only performs better by 1%. And we see that the O3 model is the best at 83%. On multilingual Q&A, which measures reasoning across various languages, we see Opus 4 is equal to OpenAI's O3 model. On visual reasoning, which are things like analyzing images, charts, and tables, O3 still has a large lead, and the Claude models trail behind by 6%. For advanced math reasoning, which are things like pure hardcore math problems, O3 still beats Sonnet 4 and Opus 4 by a large margin. So what's the takeaway? The pattern we have seen before still holds. Claude continues to excel at coding and software engineering, and OpenAI continues to dominate reasoning-heavy tasks. So that's the quick rundown of what's new with Claude 4, and I'll be doing a deep dive into the new features of Claude code soon, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching, and see you all in the next one.